Hi everybody, my name is Roy O'Connell and today I'm joining you from my kitchen in County Cork. Sadly, no trip to Kilkenny this year for Saver Kilkenny, but we'll make the best of it. And I'm delighted to be joining you virtually to cook a salad of ingredients that I hope you will like. I'm concentrating today on an ingredient I absolutely love and which has just come into season. I will be and will be in season for the next three months or so, maybe even longer. And that is the Jerusalem artichoke. Now these used to be a little bit different to get and they are um, they're a tuber and they grow under the ground like spuds except the foliage which can extend to 10 or 12 feet above the ground um, gives no indication really of these beauties underneath. They are generally speaking used in a savoury situation. I make mousses, um, soups, I serve them with shellfish like mussels and oysters but today I'm roasting them and they're one of the best things you can eat for gut health. So a Jerusalem artichoke and you start to see them more and more in your greengrocer and also in the supermarket because they are now truly being recognized as a very important part of the winter diet. By the way they're really easy to grow you just put them under the ground like as if you're planting a spud and really they come back year after year they're completely marvelous. So I'm going to roast those and make a salad with a Caesar dressing and then we're also going to make a roast hazelnut and avocado salsa to scatter over the whole thing. So this could be a lovely meat-free meal in a dish, or it could be a dish to accompany maybe some slow roast shoulder of lamb or a bit of pork or even a roast chicken. So with the Jerusalem artichokes, I just scrub them. In some recipes, you could peel them, but today I've actually just scrubbed them and I've got mine on cooking. So I scrub them. And then I cut them in half lengthways, season them with a bit of salt and pepper and toss them in olive oil and I've put them into my oven to roast and I'm going to roast them until they get lots and lots of colour. So that can be happening or you can do that ahead of time but at this stage they're not cooked enough, they don't have enough colour so they're going back into the oven. In the meantime you can get cracking with the rest of the elements of the dish. I've got some beautiful radicchio growing out of doors down here in County Cork. There's fabulous red lettuce and also some rocket leaves. If you can't get radicchio, it's not the end of the world, but this is really, really easy to grow all over the country of Ireland. My Caesar salad dressing is as you would expect it and the ingredients as you would expect it. I've got some egg yolks and I'm going to make it in a food processor because I think you get a better result actually that way. And um, thus you can make it by hand if you don't. Then the equivalent of a good pinch of old fashioned English mustard, like that. Then we have some garlic, crushed, even though the machine will crush it further. And then all important ingredients in a traditional Caesar salad are anchovies. Now, if you don't like anchovies, you can leave them out, but they really are an important part of the flavor. Right, also, some um, Worcester sauce, so about a tablespoon of that. I like my um, Caesar dressing to be good and spicy. And also, speaking of being spicy, some um, Tabasco sauce. And again, you can use more or less, but I generally speaking put in um, a sort of a tablespoon of Tabasco sauce. Tabasco, as you can see, can be a little bit reticent to leave the bottle. That's for good reason, of course, because it's spicy. So you, you, generally speaking, you're just extracting a few drops. But in my case, I'm extracting a tablespoon like that. Now that's everything in there, except two more things. One is um, a little bit of lemon juice, which I'm going to pour in. And then my oil. So we're going to make this essentially like we make a mayonnaise. My jug here, I've got my sunflower oil, or it could be um, or a light rapeseed oil or grapeseed oil would also be lovely. That is the oil extracted from grapes, or from the seeds of grapes. And as if you're making a mayonnaise, slowly dribble the oil onto the egg yolk and all of the other ingredients. And gradually, it should emulsify like a mayonnaise. Your arm gets tired of holding the jug, you can stop for a moment, turn off the machine. As you can see, nothing particularly dramatic happens for the first minute or two. 
then gradually the noise or a sound coming from the bowl of the food processor will change. And you'll see the colour of the ingredients getting sort of paler uh, as the uh, oil emulsifies it. And then it will get slightly thicker also. So by now, we have a beautiful creamy sauce with a really lovely consistency. That will keep in your fridge, by the way, for a couple of days. Some people temper that with a little bit of water. Um, at this stage, I basically will taste it. And if I want to make it just a little bit milder or to bring down the seasoning, I will um, add a little bit of water to it. But often, it's ready to go just as it is like that. And let's get this out of the way. Um, having a little glance at my artichokes, which are cooking away nicely in the oven, that's all fine there. Now, salad leaves we have under control. So a little salsa to serve with this. And I have to say that the avocado and hazelnut salsa isn't absolutely essential, but it's really good with it. And as you can imagine, it's another delicious element um, to the dish. So I've got some hazelnuts, which I've roasted and chopped this, uh, cut the skins off. And again, you don't absolutely have to take the skins off, but I do like to chop them coarsely. So I put the hazelnuts into the oven with their skins on, roast them for about 10 or 12 minutes, about 180 degrees, get out of the oven, let them cool, and then rub the skins off um, with a tea towel or in my hands, something like that. And of course, uh, the hazelnuts are going to bring a really, really delicious crunch uh, to the equation. Um, this salsa is also delicious on a soup made with Jerusalem artichokes, but today, as I say, we are concentrating on a salad. So they go into my bowl here. And then um, some avocado. Now, first, I find if I need to use one avocado in a recipe, I buy two, uh, just to be sure that when I open the avocado, it's going to um, be perfect. So avocado, when you're testing it, just press it with the heel of your thumb, and you know they're right when there's a little sort of give. And a, I don't know if you can make that up, but there's a slight indent to where my thumb went in there. So this is the Haas variety, H-A-A-S, with a dark, recognizable, knobbly skin. Just cut it open like that. Okay. There we go, and that's, this is lovely actually. Peel off the skin. The skin on these Haas varieties tends to peel easier than some of the other varieties which have a, a smoother, thinner skin. So that has worked very nicely there. Pop out the stone. I usually put the stone into the salsa because that helps, apparently, to prevent it from oxidizing or discoloring. Um, that may just be an old wives' tale, but I've always done it, so I sort of continue to do it. Now, dice, cut off any little bits you don't like the look of. A little bit of the stalk there and there. And then dice the avocado. You can also serve this salsa with something like grilled chicken, be lovely, or um, even lamb chops. So slices, strips, and dice. And then as soon as possible, you want to get the oil in here. And the oil really, much more so, I think, than the avocado stone, is what prevents the avocado from discoloring. So slicing, and then cutting into strips, like that, nice and neatly. And then, dice that a little bit, and then into the bowl. Now, a little seasoning here, of course. Avocado takes plenty of seasoning. Um, it loves a nice pinch of salt. We don't want to make it too salty, of course. A little pinch of salt. Like that. Um, a twist of pepper. A nice splash of olive oil. Or you could use hazelnut oil here as well if you wanted to. So, like that. To coat everything reasonably generously, 
And then I like to add a few drops of lemon juice. And I have a little lemon juice left from my Caesar dressing. Just a little, don't make the whole thing um, too lemony. Now give that a stir. That's lovely. If I had a little bit of um, parsley, I might add it in, but actually I'm really happy with it like that. That's as long as you cover it nice and tightly, put it in the fridge and that will keep for a couple of hours. It will of course be perfect to eat tomorrow, but maybe not as vibrant looking and the avocado may have lost a little bit of its texture. Okay, so that's our salsa. Artichokes roasting away nicely. There's one other thing I want to do to add a little bit of crunch to this salad, and that is to make um, just some slightly crispy breadcrumbs. Again, you don't have to do these, but honestly, they're very good. So I've got a frying pan here, to which I'm going to add, in this case, a very specific one tablespoon of olive oil. And I'm going to allow, allow the oil to heat. So one tablespoon of olive oil, like that. Last little bit of it in, we don't waste. And wait for the oil to heat. And you'll know the oil is hot if when you um, sort of drop in a little bit of crumb, it starts to sizzle sort of fairly viciously straight away. And as you can see, there's really not much happening there yet. So this is one of those moments when you just need to, you know, just take your time. Just leave, wait, wait a moment or two for the oil to heat up. Now, Okay, I have a little spoon ready to stir them. I love toasted crumbs like this on all sorts of things. On top of a, of a spaghetti dish, um, sprinkled over a soup, just a simple salad of leaves. They bring lovely texture. It's a great way of using up the end bits of bread. Make your own breadcrumbs by just removing the crusts of slightly stale bread into your food processor and, and pulse them until you get a nice crumb. And of course they freeze perfectly. So if you have them in the freezer, you're much more likely to use them. Now my oil is definitely starting to get sizzly there. So in go my crumbs and you can hear that sizzle, but then turn them. So you have just enough oil. You don't want to make them too oily or too laden with oil. So I'm going to keep turning those now, not forgetting my last few little bits of crumbs, just until they color and crisp up. It's not a lot of crumb, but it's enough for this particular recipe. Meanwhile, I'm going to glance over my shoulder at my artichokes to check everything's okay and everything is. Um, artichokes, as they're just coming out of the oven, you just want to serve them as a, as a normal vegetable and they're wonderful with things like, certainly this time of the year with game, with pheasants or with venison, but they're also brilliant with beef and with some fish like scallops and mussels. So that's a really good, simple way to cook them. Again, not too much olive oil on them, exactly as it says in the recipe. Um, and you know, they're, they're great and really, really good for you. So you can see the way the crumbs are just are starting to loosen them really nicely, but I want to cook them until they get just a little bit more color and they sort of feel crispy when I'm stirring them. And also they sort of start to sound a little bit more crispy, if that makes sense, in the pan. These can also be done ahead of time. So a lot of the elements for this recipe can be prepared ahead of time. Your Caesar dressing it prepared ahead of time, your crumbs, your salad leaves washed, and your salsa. Then just roast your artichokes closer to the time of eating. The recipe makes a little more Caesar dressing than you want, but that will keep really well in the fridge two, three days, I say three days really, into a jam jar, cover with a lid, put a little date on it to remind yourself when you put it in there, and then use it as a dressing for lovely crisp leaves in the sort of Caesar salad tradition. Now, some of these are just starting to get a little bit of golden on the bottom, which is precisely what I want. And also I'm starting to get a, um, a sort of a toasted aroma of bread. So it smells a little bit like toast cooking, but we're trying to avoid the smell of toast burning in this case. It's one of these funny little jobs where you do really pretty much need to keep stirring them all the time and nothing seems to be happening for a while. And suddenly they've turned this really, really lovely sort of hazelnut color like this. See, that's even, even in front of me in the pan, they're changing color. So out they come and in there. I really, really love those. Another day I might be, I might have had some slices of garlic in there and so on when they're roasting. Now, I think we're nearly ready to um, place. So I like to serve 
a salad like this on a wide serving dish uh, rather than one that's too deep. So I'm using um, a nice Irish made plate. I always think that people who make pottery or ceramics are a little bit like cooks as well because they start off their ingredients are clay and water and they mold them together and then of course they put them into the kiln uh, to cook. Now, okay, some of the lovely radicchio leaves. Hmm? Like that, which is such an incredible colour. It's amazing. I'm always astonished by these coming up out of the dark soil at this time of the year when the weather is, is starting to, to get dark. And then failing those are as well as those some rocket leaves. That's for a little bit of peppery flavour. Okay, you can make it a salad as you want, but really the main events here are the sort of the prime ingredient are the Jerusalem artichokes. So I don't really want to hide those completely. I'm going to keep also I don't want to hide the beauty of those artichoke leaves. I think that's pretty good. Maybe another little gap there. Okay, let's see how our artichokes are doing. Yes, they look lovely. Now, when you're testing artichokes, uh, what you neutralize is they cook a little bit unevenly. So I always test um, a couple of them. So if you just, and they should feel tender like that, but, but then test a few of them because sometimes there can be rogue ones which aren't cooked. But as you can see, they're beautifully cooked through. Now, and also I love when they get really caramelized. And some of them might stick slightly to the tin, but just scrape them off like that. And I love when they get richly caramelized. That's precisely, that sort of hazelnutty color there is precisely uh, what I'm after. Try not to leave any of the skin. Don't worry, this is precisely what happens when they get slightly shook looking, but that's fine. That's absolutely what we want. Okay, so we're gonna scatter those into our salad leaves. They'll be hot. They don't have to be absolutely hot on the oven, but actually they are they are best you know, absolutely hot from the oven, but they don't have to be completely hot. Now, not forgetting our dressing. So a little of our Caesar salad dressing, like that. Not too much, but it's quite strong. You will have some left over, but I said keep that for other salads. Then some of our avocado and roast hazelnut salsa going on there. So as you can see now, this is starting to look like a meal, uh, almost like a meal in a, on, on a plate. Beautiful, delicious, nutritious um, meat-free meal or to accompany some other meat. And so far, that will be absolutely lovely, but then for the final little, don't you? And you hear the lovely sound. Ooh, they're hot, those breadcrumbs. I need a spoon for those. Like that. So that is a really, I think, beautiful sort of celebration, really, of the seasons at this time of the year. Jerusalem artichokes, avocado and hazelnut salsa, toasted breadcrumbs, and then radicchio and rocus. And I hope you've enjoyed this recipe. I will hope you will cook it. And what I hope more than anything else is that I will be seeing you all in person in Kilkenny next year.